In the previous video, we saw the first step for solving a transportation model problem. In that video, we took a real life example and formulated a transportation table from the information provided to us. Now the next step, which is the second step, is to establish an initial feasible solution. So this is the table that we arrived at in the first step of transportation model. Now there are various methods to find out the basic feasible solution. So the first method is the northwest corner rule. The second method is the least cost method. And the third method is the Vogel's approximation method. Now the difference between these rules is the quality of the initial basic feasible solution that these methods produce. The better the quality of the basic initial feasible solution, the lesser number of iterations are needed to obtain the optimal solution. Now let us understand the steps involved in finding out the basic feasible solution using the Northwest Corner Rule. Now in the Northwest Corner Rule, the first step is to select the Northwest Corner Square as the starting point. So step one, is select the north west corner square as the starting point. So as we do for any map this would be the north direction, this would be the south, this would be east and this would be west. So in this case, northwest will be here. So the northwest corner square is the square AP. Now the second step is to compare the figure of supply in the row, which is this, and the figure of demand in the column. So we had P and the demand in the column is seven and allocate the units equal to the supply or demand, whichever is low. So step number two is compare the figure of supply in the row and the figure of demand in the column and allocate units equal to supply or demand whichever is lower. So basically we had selected the northwestern square which is AP that is plant A transporting material to distribution center P. So now the second step says that compare the figure of supply in the row, which is six, and the figure of demand in the column. So for distribution center P, 
the demand is 7 and allocate units equal to supply or demand whichever is lower so here basically the concept is that a has a capacity to supply six units but p has a demand of seven units so definitely you can't supply more than six units to the distribution center p so the maximum that can be allocated or that can be transported from plant a to distribution center p is going to be six so allocate six to this square so after we have allocated six units to square ap there is no more supply capacity available for a to transport to any other distribution centers so we can cancel this and make this zero also since we have already transported six units to the distribution center p we can cancel this and the remaining demand is one unit seven minus six is one so the remaining demand is one unit which has not yet been satisfied for distribution center p now the step three says that if the demand in the column is satisfied then move to the right square in the next column and if the supply in the row is satisfied then move down to the square in the next row and if both demand in the column and supply in the row are satisfied then move to the diagonal square formed by the next column and next row which will be bq so if the demand in the column is satisfied then move to the right square in the next column and if the supply in the row is satisfied then move down to the square in the next row and if both demand and supply are satisfied then move to the diagonal square formed by the next column and next row so let's understand what this step is saying so what this step is saying is that if the demand in the column is satisfied so we already allocated something to the northwest square now after allocating if all the demand in the column has been satisfied but the supply in the row is still available then basically what it means is that you have to complete the supply allocation by moving to the next column such that the supply is completely allocated and in case the supply in the row is satisfied but the demand is not then in that case you have to continue with the same distribution center that is the same column and move to the next row and try to satisfy the demand or the remaining demand with the availability from the next plant so in that case you will move down to the square bp and in case where both the supply and the demand have been satisfied so let's say the demand was also six 
and the supply was 6. So if we allocated 6 here, then both the supply and demand situation have been completely exhausted. So in that case, we'll leave both the plant and the distribution center and move to the next plant and next distribution center combination, which will be the diagonal square, which will be BQ. So in our example, the supply for plant A has completely been exhausted. However, there is still some unsatisfied demand for the column P or the distribution center P. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll continue to allocate the demand for distribution center P by moving to the plant B. So the next square where we'll allocate will be BP. Now let's look at step number four. Now step number four says that repeat steps two and three until the supply condition of all the plants and demand condition of all the distribution centers have been satisfied. So repeat steps two and three until all supply and demand have been satisfied. So now we had selected the square BP and the second step says that compare the figure of supply in the row and the figure of demand in the column and allocate units equal to the supply or demand whichever is lower. So now for BP, the supply available is one and the demand is also one. So in this case, we'll allocate one unit to the square BP. That is, we'll transport one unit from plant B to distribution center P. So now with this, what happens is the supply availability, which was one unit becomes zero for plant B and the demand, which was one unit for distribution center P also becomes zero. So now we'll move to step number three. And step number three says that if the demand in the column is satisfied, move to the right square in the next column. And if the supply in the row is satisfied, move down to the square in the next row. And if both demand and supply are satisfied, move to the diagonal square formed by the next row and next column. So in this case, with the allocation of one unit to BP, both the demand and supply for BP have been satisfied. So now we have to move to the next diagonal column, which will be CQ. And just to validate, basically, if you compare, B has a zero supply now, A already has zero supply now, and P also has zero demand. So the next logical move from a northwest corner towards the southeast corner would be moving to C, which has some supply available, and the next column, which is Q, which has demand. So the next square that we'll allocate is CQ. Now again, repeating step number two, which is to compare the figure of supply and the demand. So supply available is 10 units and demand is five units. So the lower is the demand available. So we can allocate five units to CQ. That means we'll transport five units from plant C to the distribution center Q. Now with this allocation, the supply availability for plant C reduces by five. So 10 minus five, five. And the demand for distribution center Q has been completely satisfied. So the demand now becomes zero. So now as per step number three, if the demand in the column is satisfied, move to the right square in the next column. So demand in the column has been satisfied, but the supply has not been. So we'll move to the right square in the next column because for this distribution center, there's still some demand which is unsatisfied. And for the same plant, which is C, there is supply available. 
So now coming back to step number two, compare the figure of supply and demand. So demand is for three units and supply availability is five units. So we can satisfy the complete demand here. So let's allocate three units to be transported from C to R. Now with this allocation, the demand for distribution center R has been completely satisfied. So this becomes zero and the supply availability now is five minus three, which is two units. Now, as per the third step again, the demand for distribution center R has been completely satisfied, but the supply for plant C is still available. So we'll move to the right square in the next column, which is for distribution center S. Now, the demand for column S is two units and the supply available for row C is two units. So here we can allocate two units to the square CS. So what that means is that the supply availability at C becomes zero and the demand at distribution center S also becomes zero. Now we have to validate if all the supply and demand have been satisfied. So we can see that all the demand situation is zero and all the supply is also zero. And if we add the allocations made, that should be equal to this total, which is 17. So six plus one is seven, seven plus five is 12, 12 plus three is 15 and 15 plus two is 17. So all the supply and demand have been allocated completely. Now let's find out the total cost of transportation after the allocation using the Northwest corner rule. So we have shipment units shipped transportation cost per unit and the total cost. And the shipment is from and to. So the first shipment from A to P was for six units and the transportation cost per unit is two. Now as given in the example, this is six million liters and this is 200 rupees and Six multiplied by two is 12. So the total cost is 1200 rupees. The next allocation was from B to P. The units shipped were one unit and the transportation cost per unit is also one. So the total cost is 100. The next allocation is from C to Q for five units at a unit cost of 800 rupees and so eight fives are 40. The next is C to R unit shipped is three and the unit cost is 1500 rupees. 15 threes are 45. The next allocation is C to S for two units at a unit cost of 900 rupees. Nine twos are 18. Now the total is 116. Now again, this cost is in hundreds of rupees. So the total cost is equal to 116 multiplied by 100 which is equal to 11600 rupees. The Northwest corner method of allocation does not take into account the transportation cost. It starts off from the Northwest square and keeps on allocating the units based on the demand and supply situation. And that is why this method may not yield the most economical initial solution.